functions is the same sort of idea as which is the affine approximation. Um, oh, hold on. Microphone. Excuse me. Um, the reason why, so you'll find that Newton's method in the handbook is right at the end because I put it into chapter four because in some semesters we do do it right at the end and rather than shuffle the handbook around I just leave it there because that chapter four is basically a mishmash. Okay, anybody who's listening to this on the audio, the volume's probably going to change a whole bunch now. Is a little green light on? Yes, it is. Um, that, that chapter four stuff, it's just kind of like little applications of uh, not even integration, of differentiation, of partial differentiation, little sort of bite-sized applications of multivariable calculus. Um, and Newton's method fits very happily in chapter four. However, Newton's method is very much about linearization of nonlinear functions, and hence it also fits quite nicely hand in hand with affine. So it's got two places in the course where it could go, and the first semester conveners prefer to put it with affine, so that's where we do it. So here we go. Newton's You need to memorize, and you're about to derive it. It's a very easy thing. Core Newton's method. You didn't do Taylor, but you did do Newton. Oh, yeah, I'll come back to that. Good, nice try. Nice try. The final solution. Okay, so you've got some function f of x equals zero, and you're trying to solve it. So you're trying to find the x value that when you plug into your function gives you zero, okay? Which we usually call a root. We don't know why we call it a root. And here is the first, the single variable formula, which I'm giving to you just as a reminder, but also so that we get, when we get to the two variable formula, you'll see that it's very similar. Given approximation... X approximation xn plus 1 with this following little formula. <coughs> okay, always assuming that the thing we're dividing by is not 0. Okay, so that's our single variable formula. That funny little f dash not equal to 0 should really go next to, next to it, but I, I ran out of space on the page. Process, this iterative process, can be extended to multivariate functions. Okay, so we start off defining my multivariable function. Let f of x equal I'm choosing to write it as a colon vector don't have to okay familiar big F we started off yesterday's lecture I think with something very similar and let some mystery vector R with components R and S be a solution of the system System of equations, little f equals zero, and little g also equals zero. So in other words, big F will equal the zero vector. Okay, and it's and it's our uh, what we're seeking when we do Newton's method is to try and home in on what R and S are. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so f of R S is the zero vector. Okay, so if you do have an approximation of the root, let vector xn, catch up with me, Stylus, thank you, the 
Okay, I've got vector xn, which has components xn, yn. And then approximation. of the root such that basically x and y n we have reason to believe is very close to the true root in other words r minus x n Okay, so in other words, our approximation is close to the true root. You always should try and have a rough idea of where the root is and choose your approximation fairly close. You're less likely to run into some glitches if you do that. Okay, now we look at the affine approximation because remember what we did in single variable, the single variable situation. I'll remind you of the single variables. In fact, let me jump over to that other document. I'll come back to this one. Anyway, the single variable situation, what did we have? We had some function like that, and it has a root, and that's what we're trying to find. But for some reason, we can't find it analytically. So we make a guess, and we say, okay, well, we think that this point over here is quite close to the root. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line to the function. Come, stylus, catch up with me. There's the tangent line. And so this is going to be our first approximation, x0. And then we're going to find where the root of the tangent line is on x1. Okay? And then we're going to... <coughs> that corresponds to x1. And find the root of that. And we're going to call that x2. And so we're going to keep on drawing successive tangent lines. Now, what are tangent lines except for the linearization of the function? So we're finding the root of... We're trying to find the root of the actual function... But instead, we'll find the root of the linearization of the function, the function that we've chosen to represent in linear form. And in that picture there, that talks about the tangent line. But in the case of a vector field, we're talking about the affine approximation. So what we're going to do is find the root of the affine approximation. So jump back. There we go. The affine approximation... Of f, um, gives us okay, so think about your affine approximation. Let's do the affine approximation of f of l x. It'll be f. Mm, actually, tell me what. I'm going to start off with just the ordinary one. Okay, so that's the F affine approximation where my point of tangency, if you will, is X and Y N. Yesterday I was using the letters A B, but now I'm using X and Y N. And this is just like in that picture that I just drew for the single variable stuff with the, the point of tangency and the tangent line. We're approximating our tangent line, otherwise affine approximation, at that point of tangency, which is our approximation. It's our approximation to our root. Okay, so if I plug Rs in here, I'm going to have f of x and y in. Okay, so I'm going to plug R minus Xn over here and Y minus Yn over here. But of course, we know that F of R is zero, zero vector. Because that's how we've defined R and S. Okay. Rather than writing R minus Xn and Y minus Yn, I'm going to call those delta X and delta Y. <laughs> Just to make it a little bit shorter. S minus... Yes, in fact, it would be S minus Y. There we go, thank you. Okay, so looking specifically yeah. at this bit over here, 
I what I'm trying to find now is I'm trying to make that delta x delta y the subject of my equation. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Because I have an approximation, and I want the next approximation, and I'm going to make that next approximation my original approximation plus the delta x delta y. So f dash of x in times delta x delta y equals minus f of x in. Okay, what am I going to put on this side? If I want to make delta x delta y the subject of the equation, I'm going to make that f dash that's currently sitting on the left go away. Okay, if your inclination is to divide, then your linear algebra is a bit rusty because there is no division in matrix algebra. You can't divide by a matrix. But instead, what do you do? You multiply by the inverse. And because matrix multiplication is not commutative, so it's very sensitive to order, you need to make sure that when you do that multiplication, you do it on the correct side. So if we wanted to get rid of the F dash over here, I have, I'm busy writing. My stylus is being a bit slow today. So you multiply on both sides with the inverse of F dash. So it's quite a, a cluster of symbols there. Arrows and dashes and minus ones and subscripts. But basically, we're multiplying on both sides of the equation with the inverse of F dash. And we have to do it on the left edge of both sides in order for the inverse to cancel with the F dash on the left. And there we go. Isn't that lovely? So what we're going to do is we're going to say that X n plus 1, our next approximation, is our first approximation plus F dash of X In other words, it's X n that. And that is our new Newton's method expression. I can remember in first year physics, I was always terrible at writing up those prac reports afterwards. I was terrible at them. I used to get terrible marks for them. And, and there was another there were other people in my PRAC group um, who felt firmly that any results you got, you had to put in a box. You always got more marks if you put your results in a box. Um, I think they were probably wrong. They probably just got better results than I did. But um, there you go. You put it in a box, and suddenly it's more important and more formal. There you go. So that you have to memorize. Now, compare that... Two, and let me write it here. Compare that to x plus See how similar that is to the single variable form. Okay. It's very, very similar. There's arrows because instead of dealing with points, to deal, well, instead of dealing with uh, uh, um, just the value of x, we're dealing with values of x and y in vector form. So we've got arrows. And other than that, it's pretty much the same, except that with single variable functions, there is such a thing as division. And so we can write it as a division, <laughs> whereas in matrices, we can't. We have to write it as a multiplication with an inverse rather than as division. So it's a little bit more finicky. We could, it would have been a slightly odd way to write it, <coughs> but there would have been nothing wrong with writing our single variable form like that. Of course, function multiplication is commutative, and hence they would have been looking at function in some order. So just in single 
variable formula is a slightly more forgiving formula than the two variable formula. Division is fine and commutativity is fine. But at sort of ground level, these two formulas are basically the same. Okay, so let's do an example. I shall do an example and then we can practice it. I'm going to do a page jump. Everybody ready for page jump? The most important thing here is the formula, and the formula is in the handbook. I'm going to demonstrate the exercise for the All right, please keep quiet. So we want to solve that system of equations. A system of equations is a collection of equations where they have to work together. So the x's and y's that satisfy the one equation have to satisfy the other one as well. Okay, so systems of equations are uh, quite a common thing in uh, real world applications of mathematics because often whatever it is that you're measuring, whatever it is you're observing, needs to satisfy several different things simultaneously. Okay, so we want values of x and y that make x squared plus 2y squared equal to 4 and that simultaneously will make x times y equal to 1. All right, a first approximation is 2, 0. Let's plug that in. If we plug in x equals 2 and y equals 0, the first equation actually is perfectly satisfied. Uh, the second one is not because it gives us 0 equals 1, which isn't true. But uh, you know, it's, it's not too bad, so we use it as our first approximation. Now, Newton's method is all about roots. It's about finding where things equals 0. Apparently, that's not how this is set up. Now, this is going to take those two uh, equations, but like so. See what I've done? I've created two systems where... <laughs> and that over there is g of xy. And if f of xy is equal to 0, then that's the same thing as x squared plus 2y squared equaling 4. And if little g is equal to 0, then that's the same thing as xy equaling 1. So basically, you just shove everything over to one side of the equal sign, everything, so that you end up with equals 0, and then you make those expressions your component functions. And it actually, it doesn't matter which side. So it could have been 1 minus xy. Doesn't matter. Because, of course, if xy minus 1 is 0, then 1 minus xy is also 0. So, that's by solving for 1 or 7 for the other. Okay, cool. So, that's going to be I'm going to need to evaluate f at 2, 0. That's going to be important. That's 0 um, minus 1. Okay, I'm going to be talking about what f dash is at x, at x1. And it is. Okay, so remember, if you have a vector field, its derivative is a derivative matrix. So here we've got qx, here we've got y, here we've got y, x. Okay, and then I need to evaluate f dash at two zeros. And I'll get 4, 0, 0, 2. If you notice we make any careless mistakes, please point them out. And so what did they call the first approximation? It was x1. So my next approximation will be x2. x2 is equal to x1 subtract f1. So I need to invert. Everybody remember how to invert a matrix? You can use those. Okay, so x1 um, is 0 minus 1. Now let's 
sustained invert. Okay, so invert the two by two matrix. Okay, the inverse of a two by two matrix. Um, if you have A, B, C, D, and you want to invert it, you and I need to try and remember. You swap these. You change the sign of those, and you have one over the determinant. You swap the numbers on the main diagonal, you change the signs of the numbers on the other diagonal, and you have a one over the determinant. Anybody agree with me? Um, okay, so let's do that to this thing. And I'm going to have 1 over x. And f of x1 is? Oh, no, no, I made a mistake, didn't I? Yeah. That's too simple. I beg your pardon? In case you didn't notice any points out, that f of x1, I'm mistaken, then you go to the third version, you can buy a when you multiply it out, and what do you get? You get 2, 0, minus 8. And there's our next approximation to our house. It will be slightly better. Uh, in fact, is it perfect? No, not quite. Not quite. The x, y minus 1 will be fine now, but we've messed them a little bit with the first one, but we are close there. I mean, you can see the two Okay, so the next <clears throat> And the answer is going to be no, and I'll explain why. 2 root 2 would not work. the first approximation because if dash of two root two b let's go back up to f dash there's, oh, there's f dash so if we plugged in two root two we would get let's have a look it's two x I don't want to have to keep scrolling. What was my f dash again? It was 2x, 2y, no, 4y. Was it 4y? Yeah. 4y, yes. And that one was? Yeah, and that one was x. Okay, so if I plug in 2, root 2, what do I get? I get 4. I get 4 root 2. I get 2, and I get 2. And if you work out the determinant of that, You get zero, because you get eight minus eight. Which means f dash of two root two, oops, it's supposed to be there, that makes sense to me, cannot root two. Okay, so that's the second approximation. A matrix that has a zero determinant, we call a singular matrix, and singular matrices cannot be inverted. And you need to be able to invert it in order to do Newton's method. So, and that would be roughly be the equivalent in a single variable of having tried of having used as your first approximation a turning point. And then the tangent is horizontal and it never actually cuts the x-axis and the whole method breaks down. So that's this is the sort of vector field equivalent of that. Okay. What yes. Uh, 
you, you can, can you actually find the true route? Is that what you mean? Oh, I see. Can you accidentally run into a situation like this? You, you could. You could. It would be it would be a real crazy coincidence for it to happen, but it could happen. No, it just means that you should actually start at a different place and go, oh, let me choose a different first approximation and try and avoid that happening. Yeah. Um, okay, there's a few, there's, according to my clock, there's seven minutes left of the lecture. You give it a